Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Universary. So today I have a single small claims case. There were some audio issues with this one, so I decided to leave it by itself. This is in Michigan before the Honorable Judge Jeffrey Middleton. This is Golden Pond Estates versus Mr. and Mrs. Wyant. And about minute nine or so is when we start up with them in the Zoom room. They can be heard much more clearly. For the first nine minutes, guard your ears, uh, do whatever you need to do because Mr. Bush can be heard extremely well, but Judge Middleton and the Wyans cannot be. So there's that. Let me know what you think in the comments, all right? Look forward to hearing your thoughts. Enjoy. Golden Pond Estates versus Betty and David Wyant. Mr. and Mrs. Wyant, would you come have a seat over here? And Mr. Justin Bush, would you unmute your microphone? Are you Justin Bush? Yes, I am. You're the owner of Golden Pond Estates? Yes, I am. All right, let me get to this. And are you Betty Wyant? Yes. And are you David Wyant? Yes. Will everyone please raise their right hand? You all swear or affirm any testimony you're about to give in this matter will be true to the best of your knowledge and belief. Yes. This way, that was your left hand, but we'll call it good enough. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me do. No, you're fine. Now, let me explain a couple things. You are here in the small claims division of 3B District Court. The rules are relaxed. They aren't as strict as they are in the general division of the court. We don't strictly follow the rules of evidence or procedure. Neither party is allowed to have an attorney in small claims court. There is no formal record being made in small claims court, and there is no appeal. Any decision made here is final. Either party has the right to remove the matter from the small claims division to the regular division of the court where you could sue for up to $25,000. But if you do that, you have to tell me uh, before we begin. Once we begin here, any uh, decision is final. Can I do that? What's that? Sue for $25,000. Yes, you can file a counterclaim for up to $25,000. Because he lost my cat. Before in there, it says dead bone on my and they let my cat out, and he's a $1,500 snowshoe, and the lady kept coming to my house, coming to my son. All right, well, slow down. Please. Slow down. Uh, he's suing you for $5,655 for unpaid rent and abandonment costs, um, which we're going to have to sort out. I can't make too good a sense out of this initial complaint, but... Um, you wrote me a letter, which I had a very hard time discerning. You can move to remove the matter to the general division of the court. You have to pay a fee for that. Uh, I believe it's $25. And then you can file a counter complaint, but you're not going to get $25,000 for a cat. Um, and in which case... Well, and they write the trailer. All right. And then the judge. All right, hold still. Um, you can move to remove the matter to the general division of the court, but you may have a tiger by the tail. Once you wrote me a letter, which I had at heart, he wrote it, which I couldn't understand it. Uh, if you remove this matter from small claims to the general division of the court, you're going to have to file a counter complaint. You're going to have to serve it on the defendant. You're going to have to list the amount of damages that you're seeking and the reason in support of that. So, and you're going to have to follow the rules of evidence and the rules of civil procedure. So uh, I had a lady do it this morning and it turned a simple matter into something that was quite a bit more complicated. You do have the right to remove it if you wish to. I can't stop you from that. But I want to make sure that you understand what you're doing. Yeah, because I didn't get my say so the first time. That, that lawyer lied and said I was, 
All right, well, all right, we'll, we'll get to that. I've got my notes. I saw you twice in April Yeah. in the other case. Um, all right, again, do you wish to remove the matter from small claims to the general division of the court? Um, now, what it's set for right now is a trial. I'm going to hear from Mr. Bush. I'm going to hear from both of you. Uh, yes, Mr. Wyant? Uh, I was entitled to Well, we haven't gotten into the, any of the testimony yet. Oh. Um, I'm willing to hear what you have to say, but I'm trying to determine whether you want me to proceed at this point with the small claims proceeding. Well, I want to just offer any favors and don't go in the doctor for dollars. I know what the speech is doing. And they broke in Several mind. times they had, had bonfires going and other times coming out and on the major store. All right, well, hold it. You keep getting, you keep getting ahead. You keep, hold it, hold it, hold it. You keep getting ahead of me. Are you willing to proceed here this afternoon with this small claims trial? Um, well, what does it mean? It means I'm going to take testimony from him regarding the money that he claims you owe, and then I'll hear your side of the story. If I understand you, Mr. Wyant, you're simply offering to sign the trailer over to him and call it all good? That's what I was trying to reach you for. All right, so all right. I my time. Mr. Mr. All right, Mr. Bush. Um, do you have any interest in that? Uh, Your Honor, we have long since gone through the entire retitlement process with my attorney, Robert Ducca. We took, I think it was four or five months to get a VIN number to reach out to the SOS and get a We just got it titled in December. It's it's ours now. It's, it's It hasn't been theirs uh, for quite a while. All right. Okay, let's go back to, are you willing to proceed with the trial at this point? So all I have to do is like the other trial, come in with people. Do I bring witnesses in? You could. Because my son was there when all this was, a lady coming in to his house father. And I, I was paying my rent. And then I got pictures of where the trailer You're not visible on the screen because you're live here. I can see everyone. The Wyants are here in the room with me, and Mr. Bush is on the screen, but they can't see each other because of the current technical difficulties we're having. So I'm putting them in the conference room so everyone can see everybody else. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. All no. right, Mr. and Mrs. Wyatt, can you hear me? He's talking. Mr. and Mrs. Wyatt, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Mr. Bush, can you see them now? Yeah. All right. And they, you can see them. All right. This is a claim for $5,655 plus costs. <clears throat> we were still struggling with whether the defendants are willing to proceed at a small claims proceeding or whether they wish to remove the matter to the general civil division of the court. Mrs. Wyant, are you ready to proceed with trial here? Um, uh, I think I might try to sue him because of that lady bothered me. She mentally abused me and I can get I mean, if I get the money, it don't matter to me. It's just I think the part of that trailer park, they broke in my trailer, took my stuff. And that place, he asked me, when I was down with my son, my son will verify that. He told me to go down there and clean the yard up, and I did. 
will move it. But that was the last time he did anything to that lawn. The maintenance man is the one that did it. He broke the pipes. All right. He has sued you. But you haven't filed any counterclaim against them. I, I've been homeless for a while. Well, you got sued. This is the time for the trial. Um, and he wants to proceed. Um, he's asking for a lot of money that you don't have. Uh -huh. You have not filed a counter complaint. You filed a letter, which I frankly couldn't understand. Um, I can't even get to first base and determine whether we are ready to proceed in this small claims action. You have not filed a motion to remove the matter. And this is the time and date for the trial. There is no appeal from a small claims proceeding. So are you ready to have him tell his side of the story under oath? And you tell your side of the story under oath? And have yeah. me make a ruling? Well, I don't know. Because I want to I wanna sue that lady because she did five or seven times me and she mentally abused me. And I have doctor proof of that. All right. Well, you haven't filed any claim of that. I didn't know what to do. I don't know anything about stuff like this. I'm stupid when it comes to court. file such a lawsuit. That can't be brought in small claims court. You don't get pain and suffering and mental anguish and intentional torts and small claims. So we're just going to try to proceed. Um, frankly, Mr. Bush, I had a little trouble figuring out your claim. Um, let me go back to the file. You say there's unpaid rent abandonment costs, 12 times 370. Anyway, you got a bunch of math in here, which I don't really comprehend very well. Um, how much do you believe the defendants owe you? Uh, so the, the rent portion of it, as of the case when we got the termination for uh, tenancy eviction in May 8th, when we were here last, yes. at that point, they owed 1645. And they were given their 10 days to move and their 90 days to sell the home. Mm -hmm. uh, we approached them just a couple of days after that hearing asking could we'll buy the home from you just in an effort to move to the finish line. Uh, and from what my manager said, more or less, they said, we're not going to sell the home to him or to anyone. We're, we're going to just do whatever we can to screw Justin as much as we can. And then they more or less just disappeared. So we had a, an abandoned home with no title, which we could do nothing with. Uh, so we had to wait for those 90 days to expire and then start the the abandonment process, which in itself is four or five months between contacting the manufacturer. Right, well, let's, let's try to break this down. How much sure. of this is rent? Uh, Forty two thirty five. We we just got the title and oh. and could actually do something with it in December of 2023. So it sat empty for an entire year. Mm -hmm. So you're charging them $370 a year? A, mo a, month, a month, lot, lot rent is $370 a month there. All right. But we could in 90 days to sell or move the mobile home. After 90 days, you could have removed the mobile home. That. Uh, you can't put uh, homes on the highway after a certain point, so it would have only been an option to demolish it, and that's five thousand dollars to demolish a home. So this this is actually the less costly option. Well, you're charging them rent for a period when they weren't there, and you had the opportunity to remove the mobile home, but chose not to.
you're charging the rent after you remove them. Your Honor. Yes. He said yes. Oh, um, I tried numerous times to reach Kelly Fell, who was managing it back then, to have him call me or my son David when he was living out there. So I offer him the trailer because I wanted out of it. Well, just a minute. I'm not to your side of the story yet. I'm just having enough problems as it is <laughs> with a complaint. We'll get to your side. I got your letter, but I couldn't understand it. All right. I made a finding on May of 2023 that there was just cause to terminate your tenancy. I gave you 10 days to move. I did. And 90 days to move or sell the mobile home. They didn't file for money, Dan. I mean, uh, for you to pay the rent. They filed for you to move and terminate the tenancy. So I got several things up here at once. So, Mr. Bush, I'm struggling with how you came up with your figure, 5655. Five, five. Um, as of May 1st, how much rent was owed? 1645. That's May 1st, 2022, is that correct? Uh, 2023, Your Honor. Two, two, three. All right. Then you got 12 times 370 per month. What is that? So that it was it. So it was empty the entire. I just kind of to keep it simple was empty the entire year of 2023. And according to my lawyer, we couldn't touch it because it was still theirs until you know, their, their 90 days that we, they were given to sell the home ended in August. So we couldn't legally do anything until September, which was when we went, started the whole process. So the, the 12 times 370 was just the year of 2023 where it, it sat empty on well, our then property. You're charging them twice. Um, you're charging the original sixteen forty five, and then twelve times three seventy. No, no, no. That's I'm. I have a different math here on my paper, but just to break it down into two parts. So mm -hmm. the the total for the year is forty two thirty five. That that's what the total for twelve months would be, and that sixteen forty five is in that, and then the other stuff is the between the late fees and the private detective and the getting it retitled was 1350 uh that's the whole process to up to december of 2023 uh, and so i guess and that doesn't we have doesn't 16 even 1645 yep plus 90 days of 270 370 yeah is 11101110 and how much to retitle it that process was 1315 because they did not remove it yep all right what other expenses did you have uh it took us a private detective was two hundred dollars to eventually track them down. All right. 
and there's there when rent is late there's a twenty five dollar a month late fee and that should be it I didn't have anything on there for the several dumpsters it took to clean the place when we finally did get it or um the manpower to clean it all right mr and mrs wyant yeah they filed to terminate your tenancy because you were late more than three times in a 12-month period you were um in fact not even there for much of the time yeah, I was at my daughter, my son's. Um, That's when they broke in. Um, I was in jail. Yeah, and I told him that, and David told him that. He could have went to talk to Dave a long time ago. When I got out, I requested him to get contact between nobody. Yeah, he did. Help me contact him. Between oh, Kelly so you uh, left. He was in jail. Uh, we had a hearing on April 12th. And um, then on April, I believe, 28th, um, you left in December, and sometime over the winter, the pipes froze and broke, and the water got shut off, and it was all a big mess, uh, but mostly because no one was there in the unit heating it. And you own the trailer, and the trailer was on their lot. And the the rent for the lot was three seventy per month. So, in a mobile home case, when you're late with rent more than three times in a twelve month period, they can seek what's called a just cause termination, and ask you to move and get your trailer off the lot. No one ever takes the trailer off the lot because these trailers are old. It, some of them couldn't even be moved. Mm -hmm. And the landlord ends up either being stuck with the trailer or trying to remove it from the lot. So because of the way you left it, they got an abandoned title and they now own the trailer. I presume they've cleaned it up and re-rented the trailer in the lot. Uh, but they claim that you owe rent sixteen forty five is easy. You do owe that at the time of the hearing. Then he's alleging a whole year's worth of rent. I'm not sure I'm willing to allow that. Uh, but certainly the three months that you had to remove the trailer and did not, and his late fees, and it cost him thirteen hundred dollars to retitle it. So what do you want me to know? Mrs. Why don't you go first? Okay. Um, I did not owe him that. He had 2500 on my papers. And I only owed him because I paid him up until December. And I was not even there. They didn't give me no receipts. And then I was staying down to my son's and somebody broke in my trailer. And the amount I came up with $1,280. Because I left when you told me to. I got right, well, just I got. a minute. You paid rent through December. You owe January, it. February, March, and April's rent. Yeah, what it was is a maintenance man told my son not to take my money anymore. So That's I put true. it in my savings. Once they file a termination of tenancy action, they can't take your money. Well, well they so you owed this let's assume you were paid up through December. Your trailer was there, the lot rent was due, and no one paid it. In January, February, March, April, and I think May, then he's asking yeah. for June, July, and August because you didn't move the mobile home. So go ahead with what you wanted to tell me. Well, um, them 90 days we got to sell the place or whatever, yes. someone broke in and put a deadbolt on, another deadbolt on, on the door. My cats were in there because when I left, a girl, a lady was going to come and pick them up. 
which she didn't, so I had to go back and get them. And the door was wide open. My cats were on the porch. Snickers was in the bedroom because he's scared to death. He's not used to anybody but me. And when he came out of that bedroom, he seen a lady sitting in the, on the couch smoking a cigarette. So I yelled at him. He went over by the stove. And he knew I was there. He yelled out really loud. And then he went in the bathroom and put a hole in, underneath the tub and went down inside, outside. He made me lose my favorite cat, and that cat is worth some money. That's a How snow long was that cat there. How long was what? <laughs> While you were at your daughter's in January, February, March, April, was the cat there? No, the cat was down to David's. I was at my son's house. All right. Well, after May first, when you were you had ninety days to move the mobile home. I knew. Well, were the cats yeah. then back in there at that time? Yeah, they were left there because some lady said she was going to pick them up. And I left cat food and water in there. And then I found out from David. 90 days? No, not 90 days. Not 90 days. From when to when? I'm not real sure. Um, I went to John's. Um, I think it was the 8th or whatever it was. They said I had to be out of there. The Mennonites helped me move um, my fridge and all that to my storage. And they took me and dropped me off there. And I was going to come back and get the kitten, the cats. We did come back and get them, though. We got so two. after May 8th, how long were the cats there after May 8th? I'm not real sure. Because I was at John's and I was paying him rent, and then he said he didn't want me there, but I think it's because his dogs like me and wouldn't, be, wouldn't get around who is, him. Who is John? It's my son's uh, friend that he met. David, where were you? Okay, I was uh, staying with friends shortly after doing my uh, jail term, and then was at Keystone, house and then I found different friends to stay with and then I kept trying to go out to find out what was going on and found out that uh, Kelly no longer looked money but I wanted to try to resolve that and get the title over to the trailer at that time be done with it because of too many well, Do you remember that they offered to purchase the trailer from you to just make no. some resolution of this? No, he was going to take Take the trailer from the rent, I hope. But I didn't have, have the title. He does. All right. So he would have forgiven the rent for the trailer at one point. Yep. But he didn't have a title. No, yeah, but after it got broke into, I had no idea where the title was. Yep. But they trespassed too. There was trespassing. I got pictures. I got a whole bunch Who of pictures. Who is that? Whoever went in that trailer and put that bedboard on there and that lady in there smoking a cigarette. And the maintenance man did that to that water because I asked him to turn it off, which he told me if you keep it running, it won't freeze. But he well, shut, shut it my water off. Off. shut it off and he damaged everything. Yeah, and he blew the toilet. That toilet came off the ground. Underneath the sink in the bathroom was leaking. I had my friend there, Dale, he took me around. And he seen it. He goes, what? Well, your toilet's not even hooked. And I said, it was when I left. That place was nice when I left. And I kept coming back there taking care of my animals until I moved into my son. And then somebody kept saying, oh, there's dead animals on the leech, which that was not true. I had my animals. And that lady in the trailer park caused the trouble. And I know who broke in my trailer because I caught her with some things that you can't get. And she's got his his toolbox. He took his air crusher out of the yard. She had the lady next door of that whole family stole my stuff out of my trailer. Mr. Bush, when you cleaned the trailer out, were there any dead animals in it? No. no. Did it appear that animals had been living in there without being cared for? 
Um, it was quite a while. Like, so they had their 90 days to sell it. And then I think by the time our attorney and Sheriff Morrison put the necessary notifications on the door and we were finally able to enter, everything in there seemed pretty dry, I guess you would say. I mean, there were signs that animals had lived in the house at one point. But I do know at some point uh, the door was kicked open. Another resident said like, hey, so you know, that door was kicked open, but that was, uh, they had been gone for a while at that point. I don't know anything about uh, while there were animals there. Did you ever put a deadbolt on the door? Nobody did. We, yeah, we put it only after the time, we, we deadbolted it after like after their 90 days and after mm -hmm. Sheriff Morrison said that we could. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Judge, I got pictures to prove they did not wait until 90 days. I got it on my phone and it's got the date on it that I took pictures of all, all that stuff they did to much the trailer. If you want to see it, right here. He did, the he, somebody went in there before the 90 days to put that on there, and then they had that lady in there smoking a cigarette. We don't smoke in that trail. That's why it freaks out my cat. My cat's out there all by himself, and he's not used to being in the cold and all that. He's used to being with me. Where is I'm the cat now? Rice cereal. Where is the cat now? Out at the trailer. Been trying to get him, but then he told me if I don't stop coming out there, he's going to put eviction papers in. So I stopped doing it. So the cat is still out there at the park? So yeah. Yeah, he is. I don't know where he is. I don't even know if he got hit by a car. Or he could be living in that barn next door. Right? I don't know. He just don't get around people. I we, I took care of him. He, A lady was coming to fix him, and he ran in the, my son's back room so she couldn't take him. And he didn't come out for a couple of days. I said he didn't so, but he stayed in there until she he made sure she didn't come meet him. That's why he was so attached to me. And then that lady scares him. And then he she said she's a maintenance man's friend and gonna clean a trailer. And that wasn't even 90 days when she did that. So they got in the mark, got in that trailer and they put a dead hole on. Right, what you say you have a picture on your phone with a dead Yeah, I do. I got a bunch of pictures where they track toward the dead bull, and then they somebody kicked it in, and there's stuff laying on the floor. And I only had one dead bull; they had two, right, and it the wasn't the ninety days yet. So what they the touched that. Pardon me. What was the date of that? Oh, let me look. Can I turn my phone on, sir? Yes, certainly. Okay. I got a bunch, and now you know when that guy said I wasn't in there, I got the proof of that. It was a lie, too, because I wasn't there. Yeah, I'm trying to get it to come on. It might be dead. But I know I got, I can take these pictures and show you. And I even, I even could get it. Send it down. Send it down. But it don't work a lot. It was on my cat. I'm scared to death. It's one thing that hit our car. Oh, no, it's going to fit me. Okay. okay. Come on, you. This phone doesn't work right at all. These pictures are good on it now. Plus, we got pictures of the trespassing in the window. And, and on the door. And they trespassed. And his cousin said that was right there. He he broke the law. Let me see if I can bring it up to this. Come on, you. Come on. There it is. Okay, come on. You don't know where they're going to live through this. Okay, hold on. Let's see if I can bring it up to this. Oh, it's not on this one. It's on my tablet. You go get it. It's in the car. Why kept on the phone? I thought it was on here. It's in my tablet. It's in the trunk. Can he go get it? No, I don't know that matters. He had the authority of the 
uh, Sergeant Bruce Morse to put it on there. Plus, you didn't suffer any damages as a result of them putting a deadbolt on the door. People kicked yeah. it out anyway. I kind of did. He took my cat's gone. All right, your cat is gone. Yes, and he's worth a lot of money. He's snowshoes. All right, the bottom line is you had a lease at the park. You had a trailer on the lot that you didn't have a title for. Mm -hmm. uh, you left. Yeah, David yeah. went to jail. You left in December. Yeah. And you stopped paying rent. No, I didn't. I paid rent. No, you didn't pay January, February. No, rent. I didn't. That's right. No, you didn't. I know I didn't. The no, I did not. I made a finding at the early hearing in May. No rent was paid in January, February, March, April, or May, or June, July, and oh, August. And okay. your trailer is sitting on his lot abandoned. So he can't rent the lot to somebody else. Uh, you left it in the dead of winter with animals in and out of there. And at some point it froze. But... Um, this is about the lot, not about the trailer. Then I gave you 90, 10 days to move, which you did, and 90 days to move or sell the mobile home. You didn't sell a mobile home because you didn't have a title to it. They would have just called this a wash. So he had to go through the abandoned title statute and get title to the trailer so he could do something with it. Then he's asking for a whole year's worth of rent, which I'm not willing to grant at this point, but um, certainly through August. I find that you owe the rent that was due on May 1st, $1,645. $1,110 for three additional months of rent, June, July, and August and three late fees of $75. I, that's not true. Plus 1110, plus $75 in late fees, plus what he had to pay Mr. Dutt to get the matter retitled, which was 1315. Four thousand one hundred and forty-five dollars plus ninety-seven dollars in court costs and the other fees of one hundred and forty-eight forty-three. Four thousand three hundred and ninety dollars and forty three cents. Mr. Bush, I don't see how you're ever going to collect that from these defendants. They have very little money. They're judgment proof, probably. Um, but it's less than you asked for, but certainly more than they wanted to pay. But essentially, they abandoned this trailer and left you and Mr. Dutka with a bunch of headaches. Fortunately, Mr. Dutka is a very good attorney, and he does a lot of mobile home law to help you negotiate this. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Wyant, you have... Uh, 30 days to pay this, or you can pursue collection action. The address we have, I have, is Oakland Drive Portage. Is that correct? Yes, you yes. Is that a house? Yes, you know. It's over, it's $1,100 a month plus you said all the days. Are you both living there? Yep, yes. All right. The only way you can get it, <laughs> things okay. too high. I want you to go out to the counter the clerk will give you a copy of that judgment. 
after 30 days, you can attempt to collect on this, but right now you're not in a very good position to make any. 